Welcome to Strong Talk Podcast. This is Kale Beck. Got another episode for you this week. Uh, before we go, just want to say quickly to visit startingstrongmen.com for all your strongman training needs. Go to freakwear.com, F R E K W A R E, for your team Oberst apparel. Startingstrongman.com slash apparel for my shirts. And Please uh, subscribe to the podcast. Give us a five-star review. We will read them on air. Really appreciate the support. Kind of talk about um, how to be professional, how to get sponsorships, and uh, Obi's nutsack in this episode. So nice mix of everything again. Um, and also, go to strongtalkpodcast.com. You'll see a couple banner- banners there for Amazon, etc. Click those. You just If you're going to do shopping on Amazon or any of the other um, banners on there, you normally would shop at just click those first before you do your shopping we get like six cents on the dollar and it uh helps uh keep us fed and uh this podcast on the air really appreciate it got seminar coming up in morgantown west virginia april 3rd april 2nd is sold out if you're in the area go to startingstrongman.com slash seminars got some more coming up soon and uh enjoy the show that you need to feel the sidewalls for it to count so yeah, it doesn't even count as sex if you don't. No, and it, it doesn't count if you have to do like a helicopter motion to feel the sidewalk. It doesn't count. You know, I know it's called the hel- helicopter is a little different though, but I feel like there's something else. There's another name for that. Like a propeller. You know, it's like the the shakes. You know. Yeah, the, it's kind of like a whisk. Yeah, it's it's whippy for sure, for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know about these problems. No, I, I I have enough problems trying to keep my balls from falling out of my shorts. Do you have like, to get I extra long to... shorts? Do you have to wear like long johns as underwear just so nothing like falls out? No, what I do is I take my sack and I tuck it up into my belly button <laughs> so that it just barely hangs out past the bottom. Gotcha. So, yeah, there's just like this loose... It kind of it basically makes a hammock of your scrotum skin. Right, right, right. And I, I keep my coins and stuff in there, you know, so I keep when I travel my passport, that's why I wear it goes. That's why you don't wear a fanny pack anymore. No, no need for it. You I've got the to. nut pack. You know? <laughs> the nut pack. Yeah. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Oh, that's a... Telling, dude, I've got this book so many fucking trips just this last two days. No shit. We got the uh, the Arnold Australia, the so that's a, Right on. So that that's uh, that's for sure happening. You you worked that out. You're going to Arnold Australia. I'm going for gas. Yeah, I I don't know. Competition wise, I don't know what's going on. Oh, um, I gotcha. I have no idea. I have no idea. I I think I'll be ready for it by then. I'm I'm starting to feel really good. We'll talk about that too. But like, uh, I'm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I haven't talked to anybody. Normally they contact me and ask, but um, with with these shows, especially with like Colin shows, because Colin is so busy. He's Colin so busy so, right oh, now. Oh my gosh, dude! I can't even imagine. And and uh, for all the stuff that he does, you're lucky if you get a couple weeks' notice, you know, because he. I mean, right now he hasn't even thought about the Arnold Australia game once I bet because it's got like 20 things before that. Yeah, so they just did Britain's Strongest Man, which, like, those are his, which I, is his I, I feel like, his best, his fucking, uh, enjoy right there. Yeah, I feel like Britain's Strongest Man and Europe's Strongest Man, as far as like, the biggest shows or like, the biggest money makers for them are probably the biggest ones because they're in England where Strongman's so huge over there. Like, they're filling out, you know, like, uh, arenas, soccer yeah, yeah, soccer stadiums. And now, and now, um, do you know when Europe's strongest man is? I think July. I think that's in like conjunction with the deadlift world championships and stuff again. Now, is that supposed to be after world? Then? I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll I, see. We'll see. Uh, I don't know, but I got I got the Arnold. Uh, so far, I'm start. I'm I'm booked. I'm going with Gat. So I'm going to be there. You're going to be uh, there. If, if they want you to it. lift, you'll lift. <laughs> yeah, if I wanted to listen, I'll talk. I'll, I, of course, now that Dad booked me, I'll have to talk to Dad about it. Right. But um, I don't think it'd be a problem. And uh, we're also going while we're down there. I'm, I'm going to Sydney, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do store appearances in Melbourne and Sydney. 
Then uh, we got FIBO booked, which I'm so fucking excited about. Going to Germany. And then, uh, I know, I, I'm I'm German, and plus this is the biggest expo in the world, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's we huge. We got FIBO then. I booked uh, the San Jose Fit. I booked, I'm going to Denver in May. I'm going, fuck, I'd have to look at my calendar. I booked like three more things. This is all for GAT. These are all GAT, yeah. yeah. Nice. So you're you're going all over the place. We got a, we sold out the first day of the seminar in West Virginia in April 2nd. So we're going to stay an extra, in Morgantown, West Virginia, Virginia, we're going to stay an extra day and uh, do a Sunday one, and that's already filling up. So that's cool. That'll be fun. You know what I feel terrible about was the guy who's running that thing in West Virginia for us. Yeah. I saw him at the LA Fit. Yeah, yeah, Jerry. And it didn't fucking click that that's who he was. I knew I recognized him. I said hi, but like I I didn't realize he ran that gym. Mm-hmm. So like I I I totally just kind of dismissed. I just didn't. I'm, I'm never mean to people, but I was just Ooh. like, hey, how's it going? And then didn't and, say and, anything else. Unless and, you've talked and to dude, some dude. Yeah, he's cool. I feel, I feel like a total tool for that. Like, well, you are, but in your defense. Um, like, unless you've talked to someone, like, leading up, you don't, you're like, you're in L.A., you don't figure that you're going to run into someone from West Virginia that... I had no, I had no inclination of that no. whatsoever. Before. It took me a second, and he came up and said hi to me, and, like, I've been in communication with him, and it's just, yeah. it's how, expos are, they're nuts. Like, there's too many people, there's this person over here saying hi, there's that person. You can't, yeah. it's just, that happens. I don't think anyone <laughs> is yeah. mad about it. He's happy. Yeah, that's the, the other the thing first is, day is sold people, out. I think most of people realize when they're setting these up that they deal with you. Like you're the fucking, you're the brains behind the operation. I just look pretty. That's you know? scary, isn't it? No, it is. That's scarier than me tucking my nutsack into my belly button. It sure is. But we get it done somehow. And we'll we'll have some fun. There's been um, I actually had a bunch of people contact. I need to talk to you about later. Um. I don't know if you have any free time when you're in Australia, but they want you to go to gyms and stuff like that. Oh, I'm in, unless they're going to change my flight back and they pay for the flight back. That's the only way possible. Yeah. You don't, because I, you're like, going there to work. Yeah. And yeah. like, it's like 9am to 8pm every single day. I have stuff. Cause like, yeah. that's why I tell them, look, if I'm going to Australia, line it up. You know, like just everybody you want me to see, everything you want me to do, line it all up, and I'll just go out there and fucking power through it. You know, yeah. So, yeah. Might as well make the money while it's there. Yeah, and you know, see everyone and all that. But and that's what I, because we had talked previously that next time you go there, that we'll just book up a bunch of summers. But we both have so much going on, and it's not like any of these gyms like committed. Like you know, we'll do this this time. Just you know, like it just right. hasn't worked out. Then we're both going to the Arnold. I have the at the end of March, I have California Strongest Woman on the 26th, which that's going to be... Wait, the Arnold's not the end of March. You're yeah, California. yeah, I'm saying like in March, and then, the, and then the Arnold Australia is like what, like the 12th or something? Like the weekend after? No, the Arnold Australia is the weekend after the regular Arnold. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like I couldn't, I'm going to be in Columbus, then go there, then have to fly here to coordinate the first show I'm ever running, which is turning out to be huge. Like that's it's it's not gonna work out very well so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go across the world right before that you know it's already yeah. it's already kind of pushing it like i already i'm behind on stuff with that already and there's always gonna be yeah. stuff that comes up i'm not i'm not at colin bryce's level yet where i can just kind of wing it like that like i don't know if i want no, to because be. he's got so much experience with yeah it, you know? i don't want to be either like I, I don't know like what he knows where just last minute they need a different car and they know how to get it done like this is yeah. this is my first like I've seen it done but I've never done it so I, I want to be like well prepared for that and it's only right. fair for the competitors and you know I, and I have all these sponsors and you got to deal you know you got to um, live up to what you said you can deliver and set up a live stream yeah. and do it right. Well, you also have like you have this. It's it's I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's a big deal that your show is only for women yeah. and uh, I think like. A lot of people want to know what you do and how you do it because a lot of shows, even to this very day, don't even include women. 
you know? Yeah. So for girls to have their own show, for, for women to have their own show, and for it, it to go well and all the numbers that you're getting and everybody being so excited about it, it's, that's a huge deal, and you need to take the appropriate time for that big deal. Exactly. That's pretty much what I was trying to say. Yeah, I just, I, it's not fair to anyone or myself. Like, I, I need to have, like, that pretty much all of March, other than going to the Arnold, is going to be preparing for that. And then the next weekend, we go to West Virginia. So, no, no. Oh, that's the next weekend? Yeah, after the 26th, so like the 2nd and 3rd of April. Dude, when we get done with this podcast, you better fucking text me the date to put it on the calendar. I'm telling you. I'll, I'll text him you the dates for the third time, but I will. <laughs> April 2nd <Right>. and 3rd. <laughs> Dude, you know how I am. I got stuff. I'm moving around. I, I know. Going, you know. You know, I do things. You're over here, you're over there, and you're over here now. I was, dude, I was over there, and then I was over here, and now I'm, like, right here, you know? Where, so where, where were you just I, at? How can, I be suspected, how can I be suspected to keep things together for stuff like that, you know? I don't expect you to. I, we, somebody we basically, called me earlier, yeah. somebody called me earlier, and I answered it. Remember Kramer from Seinfeld when he, did, when, he, when he got his phone number mixed up with movie phone and he kept getting the phone calls? Uh-huh. I got, I got a call and I answered it. Hello, thank you for calling Movie Phone. What movie would you like me to describe for you? Like that. <laughs> and they just were quiet. And they were like, uh... And then they actually said a movie I can't remember. And then I just started making up a bullshit. I think they, they figured out it was me like halfway through my bullshit answer. But it was funny. It was probably someone really important. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I kind of treat everyone like they're not important when they call me. That's better. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, so I totally sounded douchey when I said it. <laughs> yeah, well... Never, never go off the cuff. It's like, if, if you have nothing, like, prepared or whatever like that, and you, and you start feeling douchey halfway through a sentence, just stop. you have to admit that you're just bullshitting. Yeah, or else, or else it's just like, yeah, well, you know, if anyone's calling me, they're not more important, so... Yeah, exactly. And it's actually kind of putting myself down too. Like, if if you're calling me, then obviously <laughs> that, that's another way to take it. If someone's actually <laughs> taking the time to call you, how fucking important could they be? I know. Obviously, you got nothing better to do. <laughs> I have. The, what's that make me? I have to call people on behalf of like to get to you. So what the fuck's that make me? <laughs> hey, um, uh. Before I forget, but I want to talk about training and all that stuff too because I'm so fucking excited. But I just found out that um, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is doing a movie slash documentary on the Olympia this year and will be there. He's filming nice. from from the beginning of September to uh, all the way through the Olympia and going and everything. He's, he's going to be there. That's awesome. So, I know. is it he's just filming something on the whole history of the Olympia or this this year? Or no like, idea. I, I they just got everything put together for it, so like he hasn't released a lot of stuff. All I know is that he's going to be there. Basically, what I just said. That's all I know. He's filming a documentary about the Olympia in some in some way, and he's going to be documentary there. is is a word that I chose too. By the way, right. I'm not positive it's a documentary. He's filming. He's filming on the Olympia, and he's going to be at the Olympia filming the Olympia. It, it, I mean, it's a pretty yeah, logical it, guess that it, the document. It, or it even could just be like background for his show, his show or something. Like they happen to be in Vegas, and there's a bodybuilding show going on. Who the hell knows? Yeah, no, but the the whole the movie is based on the Olympia. Gotcha. That's cool. So you can hang out yeah. with The Rock. I hope so. That'd be cool, man. And then, you, then he's cool. going to end up calling you and you're going to ask him what movie he wants to go see. Hello, Mr. Rock. What <laughs> movie would you like me to tell you about? <laughs> uh, yeah, speaking uh, of, Yeah, and about the... Um, I talked to you a little bit before we started recording about the Arnold is... Like, I just... I wasn't even sure if I was going to go just because everything I already mentioned. And uh -huh. I just... There's a ticket that was cheap, so I'm like, you know, fuck it. I should be there. I'll, I'll figure it out. At least, you know, uh, say hi to everyone. But, you know, I got a call from um, uh, Flow Elite, who they live streamed America's Strongest Man and other stuff in their 
Um, how did that how did that go? By the way, the live stream of Strong Smith. It looked good. I watched some of it. Uh, there wasn't like the guy I know at Flowy, uh, Armin. He's a uh, he wasn't there. Like there were fl- there was like flooding in Austin, so I oh. think, so there wasn't like, like people that as many people there that like know the athletes and can do like interviews like in between and like because there's a lot of downtime. You gotta like, fill it up somehow. Yeah, um, definitely. So there wasn't much of that, but overall, like the quality was good. Um, the commentators were pretty good. Like you, you had a good idea what was going on. Um, especially like like the max logs a lot easier. I, I remember I think like the camera angle on like the farmers or something, or was there a yoke? Wasn't like it was like cutting out part of it, and it was hard to know like what the times were. But you know, like it was good. I th- overall, and I'm sure you don't. Know, just like anything, you kind of learn how to like. They're just they're brand new to shooting, like covering strongman, which isn't easy. There's a lot of movement going on versus like if you're gonna cover like weightlifting or powerlifting, that's pretty simple. You just need like right. you can just put it. You can plop a camera in the same spot and it's gonna be good for you know ten hours. Um, so even when I talked to him today, he said that they've learned a lot. But uh, I'm pretty sure that I'll be there helping out with a lot of that and doing interviews and just coverage of the, of the whole Arnold on the strongman side. And, uh, I think it's gonna be fun. So I'm glad, uh, I actually decided to go cause that's what they said. They, they kind of look to people that are already going to be there. Plus I kind of, I, I know everyone and kind of know what to say. And it's kind of, it's my fucking job. I cover strongman for a living basically. So yeah, I should be able to help them out. Perfect fit. Yeah. So that, that should be fun. I'm looking forward, you know, being, trying to bring like all the, all the athletes, uh, just like kind of the coverage they deserve and like all the stuff that we wanted. We're like, why doesn't someone interview me after this event? I'm special. <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, that is, that is awesome, dude. And it's awesome that you actually get to watch the whole contest rather than just like the dumbbell at the end, you know? Yeah. I think it's weird that they call the finals, the, the dumbbell, the finals. Cause it's not like, only a few of them get to do it or whatever. Right. Well, All I think this is the last event. Well, pretty much. I, I don't think it's really the finals. It's that it's the bodybuilding finals. And then in between, there's the intermission with Strongman. Yeah. You know, like, they're not calling that the finals because the Strongman, the Strongman. They're just oh, like, we need more. Because they only show the finals of the bodybuilders, too. Right. Well, like, on... Um, or they might show some of the prelims on like bodybuilding.com or I think that's who used to str- who streams it. Um, so yeah, I don't know about that part, but, uh, um, definitely doing the amateur stuff and, uh, you know, hopefully more, but I'm, I'm excited cause it's kind of like, regardless if it's for my own, uh, be like for, if it's for starting strongman or not, like, I just think it, that it's what I do anyways. I, I kind of geek out on that stuff just like, you know, and like kind of, and then it makes me feel important because I get to interview people and stuff. So plus, I don't have to sneak you back to the backstage. Anymore. Right, you don't have to do that again. <laughs> every no. time, I, every time I sneak you back there, you act so scared. You're like, oh, should I? Should I? Should I? you get like you turn like into a tiny little fucking kid that you're all worried you're gonna get spanked or something? Well, it's hard to hide an erection when you wear tight jeans. Yeah, that's that's just the way of the world, buddy. <laughs> That's just, that's just life, man, but it should be fun. And, uh, you know, in between all of that, we should, uh, be able to, you know, hangs out a little bit at night, even though we're both probably going to be pretty busy. Yeah. The the Arnold will be fun. It'll be, for me, it's, it's now that, uh, I'm not doing that show and stuff, you know, it's like, I actually have a lot of fun, man. But when you, when you do that show, the, the trip there is just, Business and pain, man. Just you, fucking business. And you pain. Kind, do you get kind of like a little scared that whole time going into that show, just how heavy it is? Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, uh, not necessarily. No, I, don't, I don't know if it's scared, yeah. but it's. Uh, you just. You get that, that antsy feeling, knowing you know, you know you're going to hurt. You know it's going to be painful. Mm-hmm. And uh, for me, when I did it, I was so beat up, I didn't know if I was going to get through it. And, and, uh, you know, it just, it takes away a lot of the joy of like the whole festival and all the stuff. And I have so much more fun when I don't have to worry about breaking my back. <laughs> you yeah. Know? 
Uh, I think sometimes contests, especially if you're beat up or at, like certain events or like on the borderline of like what your body can take. Um, you know, not to say you're not strong or something, but like a, a 1500 pound yoke is that's pushing it for like all but like two people in the world, what their body can take, you know? Um, right. I think there's just, there gets a point where you almost like stop competing and you're just like, okay, I'm going to get through this event and be able to yeah, do it. Yeah. It's at about all. Survival. Yeah. It's you're about like, survival rather than like, like, Oh, how, how fast, how good, how strong can I do this? You know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, definitely, can, a, I, can I walk away from this afterwards? Yeah. It's definitely a weird, weird thing. It's, you gotta, you gotta give him credit though. He, uh, Terry Todd, he, he's done very well. He's been very successful at the show. He's just, he's got his idea of what he wants to do. And he, he, you can honestly say whoever wins that show is the strongest person. Oh, you know, it's never doubted. It's never been no. doubted. Yeah. And definitely the, the people that have managed to win both, you know, like that's a very short list. So, cause they're very different type of shows. Um, and yeah. regardless if you agree with every event, like Terry Todd picks, like look at the, the Arnold's grown to, the, it has more prize money than any other show in the world. So he's done, he's done something right. Um, yeah. And every year it goes up and every year there's more, there's more people to watch it. Every, better every coverage. Year, like, the coverage and the people that run the show, Arnold and all of them, they, they are nothing but ecstatic about it. So yeah, they're big into the strong man. With results, man. It's results. It is what it is. Yeah, just because of the success of that, of like the Arnold Classic, the one in Ohio, they really want to build up all of the other Arnolds, and um, you know they want to invest to make sure, like you know, all the other Arnolds that are starting to pop up, like you know Arnold Australia. Uh, Rio, um, Madrid, all the Africa one I just heard about. Oh, what? I just heard there's going to Arnold Africa, South Africa. Yeah, I, I heard South Africa. Um, they're expanding them, but they really want like Strongman to be like that same level or like at least close, like the Arnold Classic. So, yeah, um, it should be well, good things for the sport in years to come. They're not gonna. You're not gonna get the same level of like weight and stuff. No. You can you can totally have great competition, great strongmen, but there's if say like the, the Arnold Australia when I did it last year, uh, Eddie Hall, um, Brian Shaw, they both had done they uh, they they'd all done the Arnold. No, no, Radzikowski didn't, but they Eddie Hall and Brian had done the Columbus oh, right, Arnold right. The week before. Yeah. So if 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 it's the same weight and everything. You are not going to get people to do more than one. No, you year. can't. I, I just guarantee you that. That's impossible. No, it needs to. It needs to kind of. I think a smart way to go about it would be like all the other Arnolds can end up qualifying you for the classic. Yeah, you know, that, like that, that could it, be cool. Make it like a big series like that, and then. But it's just the way it is. Is that uh, the timeline doesn't work for that? The right timeline, now. yeah, because because the Columbus Arnold, they're not going to change that time. They're not going to change that. And they can't really bump everything off in front of it. No. So. I think either way, um, because the Strongman's been so successful at that Arnold that they know that, that they for the, their other Arnolds to be successful, that that's a sport they want to pick from. So it just shows, uh, you know, the, the good direction the sport is headed in um, in general. Yeah, and it's the support to, like, people, people get just as excited about a uh, thousand pound yoke because they do a fifteen hundred pound yoke and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The the only the true difference of like of that show and other shows is the sub first off yes you have to have quality competitors but like the support when when you see Arnold standing right next to the to fucking world record deadlifts and big log presses and you see Arnold sitting in front stage watching the dumbbell get excited and stuff like that when you see those people and and showing support, it makes everyone else get excited. Yeah, and like think about how like just that moment. If uh, like you were there, but if Eddie Hall would have set that deadlift record at the Arnold Australia last year, and mm -hmm. and Schwarzenegger wasn't sitting like cheering him on, how what, what would have the difference in like how much that got shared and talked about was. Yeah, it would have been a whole. It would have been not even a quarter of it. Yeah, know? it it like changed his entire career 
by Arnold being yeah. there to, to scream at him, you know, his whole so, life. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's the big difference. And Arnold does that for all the shows. And it's, and I, I think that's, it's, I think that's why he, it's also so successful. And he knows that, like, he knows that his face is what sells the shit, so he fucking goes. He goes, travels all around the world to these places and, and smiles and takes pictures and walks around with everybody. You know, he, he doesn't have to do that. He's fucking Arnold, you know? He doesn't like, have to he do shit. He doesn't have to do a fucking thing. So yeah, he could just, he just franchise these out and just make, make you know, millions every year and just sit back. But, yeah, you know. but he wants them to be successful. He's, he's driven for that. Like, he wants to be successful in everything. Yeah. Well, you got to put your name on something like if you, you nothing ever works if like you kind of like, oh, this kind of work and you don't like actually like believe in it or endorse it. It, it. it You might make a quick buck or something, but it doesn't work for the long haul. Yeah, exactly. Got to put your name on it. Got to put your name on it. <laughs> so what, what's up with your training, buddy? You're kind of settling in in Los Angeles. Um, been healing up and uh, kind of getting back in the swing of things now with like the full strongman training. Kind of right after um, the Fit Expo. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm uh, training up at Old Haugen's place, and um, he's got Martins up there. And yeah. Martins is, he is such fucking, he's the perfect partner for me because he's, uh, he's, he's got strengths where I've got weaknesses, and my weaknesses are his, uh, my strengths are his weaknesses, you know, mm-hmm. so like we push each other. And um, oh my gosh, it's, we have all the, I've never had, all the equipment before. I've never got to practice with single fingers and stone platforms and freaking frames that are made to size and all this different stuff. You know, I've cool. never, never had that before in my training, and it's it's a whole different fucking world. Well, Ode, Ode was training out. He had everything out of his like house and garage for a long time, and he's just opening up this new gym. Um, it's called the Training Hall. We're, we're I think they're opening like grant like a public opening soon, right? Yes, they are. I'm I'm gonna have the dates and everything, and and uh, we'll have a big old festival the best we can. But That's when nice. I find out, I think it's uh, oh well, shoot, it's gotta be this this month, I think. Yeah, I think it's pretty soon, but you know, it's it's down in down in L.A. Um, but like he he has everything, and I think like at his having everything like at his house it was just every you'd have to like dig stuff up to get to it so i'm sure it's a nicer setup than that now having you know like an actual full gym but i don't i don't think there's many there's some but there's not many people that have like as extensive of a a collection and quality of equipment as ode does well the the guys that are in the top 10 in the world those guys have access to the equipment yeah you know and that's the, that's one of the big differences too. Like, you know, for me, training at Twenty Four Hour Fitness, and then going to Worlds and trying to figure out how to do a single fingers while the cameras are on, that's I mean, you're just setting yourself up not to perform at your best. And you know, my not my best is done okay, but I want to I want to see what I've got. You know, I want to yeah. see what there really is with with good training and, and like like technique rather than just muscling stuff up. But we did today I did stones for two hours because I mean all I do is muscle stones. I just fucking pick them up with back and then front squat them up like yeah. Like like a Neanderthal, you know, just no <laughs> technique whatsoever. And uh it's my first time hitting stones again in forever and I I attempted a PR. I went for the stone we don't know if it was four fifty or four seventy. But that's but I got yeah. Say again? No, nothing. Go ahead. And so I, I attempted, I, I went, I, it was after, it was just after two hours of work. So I was uh, a little bit wrecked and I started to get low back pain. So I stopped, but you know, like I, I put a three fifty up and did it for three, just smoked it, like popping, feeling it in my hips and, and, and everything. And, and, Normally, by the time I'd get to even like a 300 pound stone, I'd, I'd just be wrecked. Like, my low back would hurt so bad I couldn't bend over to grab the next stone. Yeah. You know? If you watch me in the stones last year in the, in the prelims, when, when I get to my stone, I get to the third stone and I can't bend down to grab it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you've, 
you've just used like you're like people don't understand that when you're using like uh, when you're not using efficient technique, um, where you can get away with it to a point, but it's putting more damage and wearing you out quicker that you are especially like a show like Worlds where you have to do a whole heat then a finals by day three because you've uh, just been muscling stuff you're not as recovered for the next events like that's yeah. what happens when you're and, not moving efficiently even before that like if, if you're if you're at the end of a one day show and you've been muscling things around or even at the end of a two hour training session you're just not as strong as you would be if you use technique. It's just right. simple fucking... So then you're just time. not even getting... You, you have to shut it down early, so over time you're just you're missing out on like huge tonnage that you could have loaded like more volume and more volume that you had to s skip out on because you're just burning yourself out early. Like That's what I tell people yeah. all the time. Like The number one thing is moving efficiently first. Um, of yeah. course, like myself, I've always had to do that because I'm not a Neanderthal, like the only way I'm going to be able to move these things at all, um, you know, being like 180 pounds and like five, seven is if I move efficiently or it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I don't have a, a giant frame or, you know, the muscle mass or anything to be able to just kind of like mong mongrel it. Not saying my technique's yeah. perfect on everything, but right. But you, know, you have to figure it out. You have to, or else it's just not going to happen or like, and then and that's me, why I'm, I've gone four years of just pounding things like just Neanderthal style, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, luckily for me, it, it's, there's certain things that I just, I can do really, really well. Like my press, there's, there's not a whole lot of technique to my press. I'm fucking strong. Well, that's, that's what my technique You do is. have good like, technique, like, but like, I have good there's, technique there's... to getting in the right spot, but yeah. it's not like I, I jerk or, or no. anything like that. It's not. There's not even very much leg in, in my push. You no, know? or That's even the, your your push isn't even like that efficient of a push to use what you do. Like, yeah, like it's not timed great, but your shoulders are so fucking strong that it's fine. Um, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know? but like I think and, there's there's a lot of the movements you do have good technique that you've learned on, but you know there's some and then some stuff it's just harder to practice them as often, especially yeah. like. There was a time like when we were training together, or, like when you first moved down to the Central Valley and you had a crew that was decent for a while, like you're drilling it and there's more people around. Like there's only, I'm like, it's really hard to do this sport on your own, really. Like you can, yeah. or you need someone that's at least you trust that's like, like you and I, we're not the same strength level, but you, you trust my opinion and we're there and, you know, I'm going to say, hey, do this. And just those little things in between, it's not like I'm telling you what to do. Or you're telling me what to do, but you're just it's just another eyes that you trust seeing little things. And so you're constantly refining and refining things. And you know, you might have trained like stones a couple times in Oregon or like there's places, but with how strong you are, most people are just gonna look at you and they're gonna be like, Oh, that was awesome. That doesn't fucking yeah, help. That exactly. doesn't help anyone. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, cool. Then you just walk around, you're like, I'm the baddest motherfucker there is, because that's all anyone ever tells you. And I ran into the same problem um, my last two years of competing. I didn't really train with someone like that. You know, I'm just training at a CrossFit gym. They're like, wow, you pressed that. How much does that log weigh? And, like, it'd be, like, 205 some days, and they're they're impressed. Like, all that does is, like, build your head up where, you know, like, not someone's calling you on your shit. Like, why the fuck didn't you put your hips down and get them through quicker? Right. Like, what, why, are you, why are you being lazy there? Like, just little stuff like that. And you go, oh, shit. And then, you you know, so. It, the other day I was that, I was that deuce. And I was warming up 135 out uh -huh. of the rack, pressing overhead. Yeah. And someone's like, holy crap, dude, you just wet my max like easy. Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, see, this, that, that's the exact same thought that I had. Like, I, I want people that they don't have to be as strong as me, but I want people who hold me to be accountable yeah. for how strong I am. We all need it. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like I, you could, you'd always... Like, I remember we'd be warming up on stuff like log, and you'd go, like, I want to start at 260. And that's, like, fucking 90% of my logs. So I'm like, well, I can't start at 260. But <laughs> if, if you're, like, if you're just fucking around at 260, you know, I might say, like, hey, like, you, like, you can't just use all arms to get, like, 260 up. Like, you know, you got to start practicing the movement so it gets heavy. So you're kind of, you know, you're drilling that movement on every rep. Like, you kind of treat, like, every... um 
you know, at, you treat warm ups like it's going to be a max, then the max that everything feels new. You don't like, oh yeah, now it's heavy. I got to do this. You're already in that mindset. So that's like yeah. when you say you're, like you have like 135 on the bar and you're just blasting it up. That's how you should attack warm ups because then it builds that that confidence as you go up. Like if you make if you're doing it like full push, like real fast, and it's feeling easy, then it just it keeps you. You know, it's all like a lot of this stuff's mental. It always helped for me. Like if I lifting things fast and like well not like sloppy but you know like that like on my warm-ups then i get to a heavy set and it just flies up set yourself yeah. up for success is is that why you always took uh private breaks during training to go rub one out yeah because i just need to make myself feel good you know confidence yeah get that confidence up and get it back down yeah Get it up and then down. Like probably totally. about how, well, we had some long ass training sessions though. Like they took fucking forever. So yeah, I mean, who can go three hours without rubbing? Who can do that? Not when I'm peaking for a show. I'll tell you that much. Like, Dude, I'm telling you. Now, sure, but like <laughs> then, like no, like the the I won't be able to drive the hour home without killing someone. You just got to be careful with that, you know, to drive home. I mean, you get caught masturbating in traffic one time and all of a sudden everybody labels you, you know? That's why you got to drive a big truck, man. I do. Because but it still doesn't keep people from seeing stuff sometimes. Yeah, well, you know, truckers don't care because they're doing it too, though. Yeah, but I don't want them doing it watching me do it. You don't? Well, I mean... It's kind of distracting. This is more different. Of, of, of course it's a turn-on, but, like, it's still a distraction because then I'm like, well, do they want me to do something different? Am I doing it right? You know, like, should I have my beard tucked back? You know, a lot of people think it looks better that way. Like, you know, I get, I get too in my own head. In your head or in their head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Oh, <laughs> uh, so we've, we've been way too serious this whole this whole podcast. We went really like serious. the entire podcast serious. I know, and it's really starting to piss me off. Uh, really? Yeah, we're we're supposed to. Record. I felt bad that this guy posted about listening to our podcast and tail tours bicep and Robert <laughs> Obi is just making fun of it. And I'm like. Man, like, there's people out there that don't, like... They don't uh, understand the dynamic. They don't understand us, yeah. And, like, they think that I just, like, I'm like, oh, you're, you're a bitch, or whatever whatever I said. Or you just talk about he's a power bottom. <laughs> they think that's fucking true, dude. Like, like you just bully yeah, me I mean, around. Oh, man. Oh, but that part, of course, that part's true. <laughs> yeah, but, but you don't bully me around with it, though. No, 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 no. I just... I just hold you down and, and <laughs> hold you. Basically. Me around. Uh, but yeah, like we, when you're giving oh, your bicep. It's so weak. Like obviously you're fucking kidding. And I wouldn't talk like if someone actually felt like that about me, I wouldn't talk like that. <laughs> like I wouldn't talk to them, let alone for no. a fucking hour and then record it and expect thousands of other people to give a shit about what we say to each other. Like, yeah, I know. I'd be like, yeah, this person, I well, actually, I did that for like a year, but anyways. Oh my gosh, you went to hell, man. That's funny. That's funny. I guess I you would know, do there's that. There's been a couple things that I've been like forcing myself not to talk about over the last two weeks because first off, Kale doesn't want beef and me, I don't want to give credit to people that don't deserve it just because they, they talk shit. It doesn't mean they deserve like other people to know who they are because right. they're fucking, just because they say something stupid, you know. I mean, but yeah, I'll, I'll it's, talk it's about anything. It's starting, to, it's starting to bug me. Yeah. Well, it's all good now. yeah, it, and the reason why, like, there's certain things that I don't think are worth talking about is because it just kind of feeds into like when people are overtly negative all the time. Like, I don't want to be a part of that. So if, yeah. you, if you start like building into like stuff that when people are saying like this or, you know, I see people talking shit about me all the time. I'm just like, I don't, 
I'm not worried yeah, about you, what you're you doing. Be used to that stuff, I am. You totally. Me, I'm not. You're not. I, people, people fucking love me. <laughs> I, I, there's they like do? maybe two people in the entire world who don't think I'm the coolest person that ever existed. Yeah, maybe three. <laughs> and now that, now that you've said that, the temper has multiplied. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but I think. No, I'm just playing. I'm. I'm I'm fucking used to it. I, I grew up chubby and being bullied, and then like all of a sudden, everyone was nice when I started getting good at sports. I don't, you don't fucking forget like sixteen years of life before that. You know, I grew up tiny and Jewish. Um, I was always picked on. This is something I was thinking about for whatever reason. Like I don't know if it's because I was always like the smallest kid, but I was always friends with the biggest kid. Uh huh. Does that make sense? And then well, like a- now. Big guys, big guys need, uh, like, let me break it down for you. Big guys understand how to get food, <laughs> and the little Jewish kids have money and don't eat a lot, so, <laughs> yeah. But, like, pretty much, like, throughout grade school, and I moved, you know, I switched schools a couple times, so every time I'd switch a school, it would work out where... I'd, I'd go there. The biggest guy out in the yard. No, but, like, the biggest kid there would bully the fuck out of me for, like, half the year. And, like, you know, like, just relentlessly, like, make my life hell. Until it yeah, got, I like... I I'm sorry about that, okay? <laughs> well, I kept following you You still do. <laughs> <laughs> you better call me this week for the podcast. <laughs> But, so, like, and then we'd end up getting in a fight, like, an actual fight, like, you know, like, a little kid fight, though, like, we might have kicked each other in the shin and, you know, like, tussled around a little bit, and then after that... when you were a kid, you fought like a little bitch. Yeah, every kid does. No, no, no. (laughs) No. Well, so, but... Dude, when I was a kid, I, my brothers fought me harder than that. My brothers That's would true. wrestle me down and then just wail on my face. And yeah. chest and stuff. They realize once once you get in trouble a couple times, they realize they start hitting you in places that they can't see. Your parents can't see the bruises as well. So, yeah. like, where your hair is on your head or, like, your <laughs> chest or, like, your body. They'd be punching you on the thighs for just no reason, you know? Yeah. Yeah, bro- older brothers are great, huh? Yeah, but it, it taught me how to beat up kids like you that fought like little bitches. <laughs> right. But so, like, we'd get in a fight and, like, they'd beat me up and you'd tussle or stuff. And then after that, we're best friends every time. And then we oh, fuck yeah. with everyone else. Yeah. And we get in trouble I together. I've had that happen before. Yeah. Like, where, where I got into a fight with a kid, and just like you, just like you're saying. And then you end up being friends. Because you're like, all right. Yeah, the, the, what's weird was, was like, the, the kid I'm specifically thinking of, he was new to the school, and, like, I was super nice to him. Uh-huh. And then, for some reason, one day, he just, I don't know what it was. I think I somebody must have said something to him or something. I don't know what it was, but he just wanted to fucking fight me for some reason. And, and then we didn't fight like, like you're talking about. Like, I fucking pounded the shit out of this kid. Yeah. But, um, and then, like, the, the, the next period or whatever, we were totally fine. Like, one of my best friends, Kyle Van who was, who yeah, was still to this day one of my best friends, you know him. He and I, we that's how we got became friends, too. We got in a fight. He busted my nose, broke it for the first time, and I busted his lip wide open. And then your friends. We didn't fight like you're saying, too. Like, no, we, like, fought through. Kyle, we got in real fights. He broke my fucking nose. Like one shot, we both got one good shot before we got separated. <laughs> he broke my nose; it was like crooked as fuck. Yeah, and then no, I, we got I in like busted his lips open. We got in like I got in like real fights, and oh, we got in like up. tickle fights. Yeah, yeah you know, like, I tickled him till he peed, and then he I did made me. Fun I of did him. him. Um, but yeah, I remember. Yeah, but it was just, and then I like it was that would always get bad because I was a shitty like. I'm like, oh, I got this, like, giant friend now that I can, like, that I can actually, like, think of, like, how to smartly get in trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, like, that was always bad. And then I was always in trouble, both of us. Like, I remember one of my friends in, like, like fifth grade or something, I got called in to the principal's office for shit that happened at school on days I wasn't there. 
know, like, I wasn't, they're like, well, I know you weren't there, but you, you, it was your fault. <laughs> totally. All the yeah, time. Yeah, it's funny that that happened with me, too. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, it's weird. Our paths are pretty similar. It's, it's really weird, and we keep realizing how similar they were. And we didn't grow up very far from each other, either. Um, I know, I know. Like it's weird. And then, like, we ended up kind of, like, doing the same thing. We didn't really get in a fight, but, like... No. Like one of the first two times we trained together, we got in that like argument and shit. Man. Yeah, <laughs> we were like a team after that. Yeah, it's like all right, my bad. L- let's do this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, because I remember like when, like, I don't think people realize and we say it all the time that you haven't been doing the sport for very long at all. Like what, like 2012? It was 2013 actually. We just figured this out the other day. No, you went to nationals in 2012. Was that it? Yeah, in in Tunica, because in 2013 it was in Texas. Oh. Or might have been. You might have even yeah. went to Nash. Anyways, it, it, it's it's not very long compared to a lot of people. But like, yeah. I, like when you started, the like, a lot of, most of our conversations was was you do something, and you you then ask me how good is that? Yeah. And I'd be like, that's really good. And you're like. But, like, what is, uh, and then you, like, would have, you'd, like, slowly, like, add names that you knew who did it. It's like, like, well, what does Adrenus do? What does Derek Poundstone do? Like, you you knew, like, five people. And then they, yeah. that slowly started to expand. I'm like, they do that much. Like, fuck. Okay. And then I was like, but yeah. then you'd be like, well, who does that really good? And I'd be like, some random fucking Icelandic or, you know, Lithuanian guy or something. And you watch like to go every, look him up on YouTube and watch every single thing he does, and every time he's yeah. ever done that lift that you can find, and you'd watch it because we didn't have anything yep. better to do. But there was like that's that was what like we have to do. Like that's how I figured everything out was just YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, you find people that do stuff well, and you watch. Like they don't. It doesn't have to. Like if you need an, inst- I'm I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by saying this because I put out instructional videos. But if you can't figure out like how an event's done by just watching someone do it without them having to break it down step by step, you you need to study more. Like you should be able to watch like how Zadrunas or someone log presses, then look at your own video and see small difference after small difference pretty quick, or how this person loads a stone versus you do, and like, oh, your your ass shot up in the air and you never sat, you know, you never got high on your chest. You're like, okay. Like you should be able to figure that out. I think, yeah, I, don't, I think people just you gotta don't. breaking down film is gonna be like a big fucking part yeah. of of actually training. You know, people it's in, in every sport, sport. It's not, it's not like every every other sport does that. You know, yeah, there's film every days in football. That, that's all they do. Watch it. And that's how I learned is like because I didn't train with anyone and I just watched like every like people put out all these videos and you can't learn from like a fucking fifteen second Instagram clip either. Like that's not gonna show you no. much. But people don't even, they won't even go and watch a long-term, like, you put something on YouTube versus Instagram, it's going to get, like, 50 people are going to watch it versus 500 or, you know, 5,000. But Yeah, exactly. But you can't help if people don't want to, you know, you have to invest. If you want to actually get better, you have to invest time, bottom line. And you got to study it. You can't just, oh, how do you do this? Go fucking look it up. There's how many hours of the best in the world doing these different events everywhere, like, Watch like every single world strongest man from you know then till now like w- weird shit. Yeah, and there's people a, do they just want quick information and like do it now, you know, rather than actually dissecting it and figuring it all out. Yeah, and and you shouldn't trust like some random person in a Facebook group on on Facebook like they're gonna like solve your problem. You don't know who that person is. Like you should know. <laughs> you should look up. Oh, this person's at like the log lift world championships, or I saw that they did, you know, like uh, you know, like a one seventy five guy that can do like a three hundred pound log or two eighty or something that's impressive. And then you should look at like all of their videos and figure it out. You, you shouldn't be like, oh, well, you know, Tony C on you know Facebook group starting strongman says that I need to keep my elbows up. Like he's just repeating that from five fucking people that told him. Yeah, or fucking Ryan Mallon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I called somebody out by name. Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> you can do whatever the fuck you want. Oh, I basically am right now, trust me. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, we can keep on a tangent. I want 
other people to realize that um, something that is very uh, seldomly done and like one of the reasons why uh, uh, someone like yourself is successful and has sponsors and stuff is because you act professional. Um, act professional? Oh, yeah. Like... I think it's funny when, like, we, both of us get told that we don't act professional, but in, like, the, if you actually take a, a step back, like, we are professionals because this is our job. We make our living within this industry because we yeah. do act more professional than the majority of our peers. Like, like and it, it has to do with uh, a lot of stuff. Like, it's, yes, we act silly and stuff on this podcast, but it's not like we're going to go and try and get sponsored and tell people, hey, I'm strong as fuck, you know? Like, <laughs> what the fuck's that do for anyone? It's, it's, Being... it's ridiculous. Like, you wouldn't believe how many people have actually specifically said that. Yeah. Well, I get sponsorship proposals from athletes all the time, and it seems like the less accomplished or strong someone is that sends me a proposal, the more professional their proposal is. There's this weird, like, uh -huh. there's, like, this weird, like, strong, it's like they, smart. They've developed one part of their body, like, their mind and stuff, and yeah. they haven't developed the strength as much, so they're, they're, they're smarter or something like that. But I would be way more likely to actually give someone like that something than someone who's, like, can, you know, deadlift 800-something pounds and is a pro or, what you know, is going to Worlds even or whatever. Like, if they don't, like... Because if they don't act in a professional way, they're representing your company. So you don't want to work with them. It's the same like even in acting. Like someone could be the most talented guy in the world as long as he's not like Robert De Niro. If he's a pain in the ass to work with, no one's going to want to work with him. Yeah. You know, there's there's a thing between being like 80% like talent but 100% like easy and nice is going to go way f further than like 20% easy and 100% talent. Um, yeah, exactly. But there's it, reasons, like if you look at, I mean, I don't mean to be a dick, but Demitar has won America's Strongest Man in the last two years, and there's guys that are not as strong as him that are doing a lot better, and it's it's just marketability. Yeah, um, and he, I think he's actually improved a lot in that too. Um, you said that, yeah. You said he's improving on that. Yeah, I think he's he's he posts a lot of videos online. He doesn't get into um and like I used to do stupider shit online too. Like you learn, um, you know he's I think he's getting more people are paying attention to him. But there's just simple things that people should do. Like your Instagram name should probably be your name, or yeah. at least something that's like coherent. Um, that's like one tip for people. It should be like. Like, like, stuff like that matters a lot. Like, if someone sees you on TV, like, if they see you on World's Strongest Man, and they Google Robert Oberst, or they, like... Everything put, should be named as such. Yeah, or, you know, like, or, like, you know, Shaw has, like, Shaw Strength everywhere. That's gonna pop up if you put, like, Shaw Strong Man. Like, that's easy. Right. Enough. But it can't be some, like, weird this, 16, you know, 69, underscore, yeah. or whatever. Like, then... No one's going to be able to, like, they might want to find you. They're not going to know how, and they're going to give up once it, like, it takes more than two steps. Um, you know, just simple stuff like that is, uh, you, like, it, as simple as that. And, like, any of the people that I've ever, like, helped out, it, like, or let's say any of the sponsorships I've ever, I've ever got, like, big or small or whatever, is they've worked out because I've done something for them. Do you know what I mean? Like... Like, okay, if you're coming up, if you're going to come up to me and you're like, hey, I want this or this, you should know, like, what, what is the business model of that company in the first place? Like, I'm a content yeah. company. I need articles. I need, I need write-ups from shows. I need information. So you'd be like, hey, I, if someone sent me, like, uh, an article, like, here's, you know, uh, uh, you know, how to improve your deadlift, and they sent me a deadlift article, and it got a bunch of shares and stuff, I'm like, oh, that's someone that can keep doing that? Then they just already provided value to me. I trust them, and then I'd, I'd give them more. That's how it works, and that's how I've done it in the past. Um, it was like I've got a decent amount of sponsorships for California Strongest Women, and and uh, like people emailed, like I've had people message me like, "Man, you're getting like actual companies, you know, that are or like at least in our industry that like are they're not like startups, they're established." And I'm like, "Well, it's easy." 
it's easy for someone to trust you and like want to support your event when you've already made money for them. Yeah. So and you show that you're professional. Yeah, like we've already had a working relationship for over a year or something where you know like I've made them we've made money together in the past, you know, however or something that it, you know, and they've seen that like a banner on my website has sent this many clicks to theirs or this many buys to their thing, like then they're of course they're like, yeah, of course they're going to shoot a hundred bucks and some product or something to a contest. That's nothing. That's just good to keep that relationship going where right. like if I never had any, if I, if I come to them the first time I ever come to them ever, like, Hey, I want $500 for this contest I'm running. They'd be like, okay. Like that's not how you, you start really. Yeah. The, why is this helpful? Yeah. Yeah. So to sum it up, you, the, the first interaction you ever have with any sort of company that you ever want to continue to do business with should never be asking for anything. Well, I mean, unless they approach you, it's, it's true. It's also, it's, it's, it's hard to get your foot in the door at the beginning. It with, is, you know, with, with all that, but like, you know, it, you have, you, the truth is you have to be ready to answer the question what what are you going to do for our company? Mm -hmm. You have to be, you have to, and not ready just to answer it, but ready to fucking follow that up with some truth and be able to. Like, what what is it? What is it that you're worth? Like, if you want, say it's just a hundred bucks for a show. What is it that you're going to do for this company? Because the company is not in business to lose money. No, it's not no in business is. to give everyone a hundred bucks and not get anything in return. If you get a hundred bucks, you've got to give them several hundred dollars worth of publicity or, yep. or like, of like, of like getting their, their brand recognition. You know, it's, it's not just, oh, well, you can write it off as a tax write off, so give me money. <laughs> no, like, you know, it's not the fucking business. No, but any business that acts like that's not going to be around for very long. Um, exactly. And I think, like, a lot of these companies, they want to support things, but it, you don't. Like if you, like if everyone that asked me for a hundred bucks, I gave it to them, I wouldn't have a place to live. So, yeah. and it doesn't mean I don't want to, but you have to kind of choose. And if there's people that already kind of have a relationship, I will. And it gets to a point where, um, something that you've done where you also on the, on the flip side, you can't sell yourself short either. Exactly. But so there's a weird fine line there. Um, but it's, I still think it's better in the long term to sell yourself a little short versus just demanding the world without ever, like, even having, like, a follow-up, like, even having in your head what the follow-up to that is. Well, that, that also depends on where you are in your career and what you're asking for, yeah. too, you know? It's, um... Yeah, I tell people no all the time, little, nicely, little boy too. Just woke up and he, my little boy just woke up and he's cute as fuck, so... <laughs> it's, hard to be, it's hard to care too much about this stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it makes me care way more because right. of how I see him. Right, exactly. Um, so, what I was going to say is, fuck it, like, let's just talk about this. Um, the, the way to get a, a sponsorship, let's, let's just talk about that. Like, if you're, if you're at nothing mm -hmm. and you... And you're trying to find someone to, to to do, let's say anything more than just like a one-time thing. So if yeah. if you're looking for just supplements or you want a continuous really, you want like a year long some sort of, it, you know, give yeah. you some something like where it's a it's a like an actual contract a year long. Maybe they'll pay some entry fees. You know, you get yeah. you get something exactly. Now, the, the way the way to start the beginning is you have to get your fucking face out there. Yeah. You you can't you can't go and ask for something if you're not worth anything. So you need to start fucking even if you can't get a big number of followers, the the, the big you have to be very active on social media. Mm -hmm. When the number of followers, depending on guy or girl and all that stuff, it'll range or whatever, but they will help you get more followers by promoting you. They just want to know that you are willing to post several times a day. You're willing to promote their stuff. You're willing to do this. That you can't. You can't have them look you up on Instagram and the last picture you put up was 65 weeks. 
Yeah. No, it doesn't it work. And it's not. It doesn't. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a good point is even like when I say you have to like I'll look like if I want people to keep a training log on my site, I've approached people in the past and I say, hey, I'd like you to and I think it would r work really well for them to keep a training log on your site. I'll support you up to the show. That never works. The only time I've ever seen I've ever had success with that is when I see someone is already keeping some sort of training log on a different site or on their own uh -huh. blog. And I go, hey, this thing you're already doing, you're already showing that you could do that. All you have to do it is on my platform. Would you like to do that? Then that always works because they are, you know, it's, it's not any extra they're already doing. So right. if, if I'm going to pick someone and be like, damn, I don't know why that person doesn't have more followers. Like, like, like for me, like I, I could really care if, if someone has like 600 followers or something, but they're posting good stuff, then that's good content for me to share so if I share it, I know their, their followers are going to jump up. If I think it's good, then most people that follow me probably do. So they're going to uh -huh. jump up to you know 3,000 within a couple months just for me resharing their stuff consistently. Um, right. But I need to know that they're already putting that stuff out there. Exactly. Um, so and you need so to, you that, need to know. The first, yeah. The you, first step is, is you need to be active online. Yeah, you need to, to be fucking active. You know like what people look at what people that are already sponsored what people that already have what you have, what they're doing and what um like what you can tell that then you can see what their sponsors want from them that they're already doing. So just do that, but you're not getting paid you're not getting any incentive for it yet, but you're building. You're just you're showing that right. you can do those same things. You're showing that you can do the work. And then after you've done that and you've got a good handle on it, then you need to go and actually, like, go to these expos and stuff. The, an email will, 99.99999% uh, of the time, will get you nothing. No, it, it needs... Will, it, it needs... You need to have them... You, you need FaceTime. You need to have them... You need to show that you have the ability to talk like a regular person mm -hmm. when you're with someone, that you're not, like, awkward, that you're not fucking weird or rude or any of that stuff, you need to show them that that you have personable skills, you know? Like, that's really one of the biggest deals when once you start promoting is they want to they wanna see somebody who they can sit at a booth and people will come up and have a conversation with them, you know? So, don't, don't, don't shoot an email to everybody. Go to booths and talk to people. And just, just tell them Hey, you fucking phone is driving me nuts. It just it should be muted. What? Oh, it's fuck. My mic's not muting. It should be muting. Sorry. Uh, oh well. Good. Yeah. So don't. You just gotta show that you're uh, more professional than I am. Yeah, basically. And <laughs> it's, go around and 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 talk to these people. You know, don't don't be like, hey, I need a sponsorship. No. Don't be a fucking asshole say, like that. People say, hey. This is My who I am. Is Bob, I'm I'm a I'm this, I'm that, I'm a competitive this, I'm a think of the best way to describe what you do without lying. You yeah. can you can you can say I am a competitive strong man, I blah, 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 I I am I'm really efficient in these things this and and all, whatever the fuck you want to say. This is what and, I... It's it's basically a job interview or like a resume. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. So, it's or a just, date. You're, you're presenting yourself... Cold. You're presenting yourself in the in the best way possible. You're accentuating exactly. your good qualities. You're, <laughs> you're kind of hiding your bad ones. It's just... That's it's life. It's like Kale with the tight pants and loose shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude... <laughs> on that, now, now we're going to get completely off topic. Cold-blooded. But, like, since I can't really train my... Cold as ice. I can't really train my upper body at all. I was, like, trying a shirt on, like, because I have a new shirt design, and I'm like, fuck, I look like fucking shit. I have no chest. I might have, like, oh, no what? shoulders or arms. But, like, my... Because I'm squatting, like, every other day, my legs are getting fucking huge. But, like... <laughs> But, like, I don't think my gut's even gotten any bigger. It's just, like, I don't have any chest or, like, arms anymore to, like, hi like oh, hide that's it. That's the worst feeling when it dwindles away. Yeah. So I'm like, my motherfucker. And, like, then... All right, let me, let's finish this train of thought. Yeah. Some, somebody out there cares. Hopefully. 
Okay. So you just walk around, introduce yourself, talk to people, you know, and, you know, in the most casual yet professional way, mm -hmm. talk to them about their company and about how, how, uh, you've always wondered what it's like or how, what does it take to get into stuff like that? And, or and, just you know, say just, what you like it, about their company, even like, and, and show that you have some too. knowledge of it at all. Like if, like it, you have to show that you actually know, like if you can tell, like if they know that you, you're obviously familiar with it or what they do or the products they have or, or hopefully use them already or, you know, you know, the easiest thing is you just, what I do is you just flatter them. You bullshit. Flatter yep. them. What I would, what I used to do. What I just go up and be like, man, everybody's talking about your guys pre-workout. You <laughs> yeah. Like that. You yeah. Know? You don't even, you don't even need to know every ingredient in it. That, and like, you that, you that, don't that, even need to know the name of the company. That, that, you know? that'll work for like half the booths at the Arnold. Just that line right there. Yeah. And be like, yeah, I have this competition, and they'll uh, the 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 worst. They're gonna give you like probably at least way more samples, and you didn't have to sit in a line. Um, yeah. Or like that's the worst case scenario, or they'll probably give you like full on product, just like cool. And then if they do that, and you're at that level, what you need to do then is like, let's say they give you like a shirt or shorts, you need to post about that shit and tag them in it, and then get that conversation further, like. Right, you know, because then it, you, you need you to have an email address or a phone number, or something too. It's best you give them a card, or and also say, hey, um, you know, I sometimes write reviews, or hey, sometimes I would, I would love to talk to you further, or yeah. whatever. You've got to come up with your way of saying it. Right. Um, my way, I, I was a lot more blunt and a lot more. Uh, I wasn't. Like I like I said, like nobody wants to hear I'm fucking strong. <laughs> but they want they want to they wanna see that you're confident enough to actually approach the subject, but that you're not pushy and you're not like gonna make people uncomfortable. Uh -huh. But they need they need to know what you're there for, you know? Well, and you've it, gotta it, find your way of of approaching it without being underselling or overselling yeah it, it, and that that's going to be completely like who you are where um like someone like me i'm gonna have to talk up the strong part because i might have like looked like more bodybuilder-ish or like but like you you don't have to say you're fucking strong ever because you're they already assume that you're 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 huge and you're like 400 pounds and you have a sleeveless shirt on like you you need I just I immediately tell them about my nut pack. That's yeah, you need do. to you need to explain your hammock nut sack and and how it yeah. works and that you know like that's a good selling that's point when you're at a booth. That's, that's what sets me apart from other guys. Yeah. The other guys. But you you almost need to be like I'm not this big scary monster. I'm also I'm actually a person. That's what you need to convey that, to them. That's what, what my sales is. Like, yeah. I go up and I overdo the smiley, happy, yeah. fun stuff and just show you, look, like, this guy is, like, we can take photos that make this guy look scary, but we can also have fun with this guy. Yeah. We can we can do both sides of this. Right. We're, like, like me, I have to convince them that I actually do strongman. Like, they're like, huh, really? I right. have to be like, yeah, there's a weight class, there's weight classes and... Right now is the Arnold World Championship, and if I make top four, I'll go to the finals. And you know, last year I was a point and a half away from it. Blah 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 blah. Like I'm right there, and they go, "Oh, really?" And then you know, and then it's like, "Oh, okay." So this person's not just you know they don't just look decent, and but they're actually like it's not just like another like there's some something else to it, which is a little different. Um, yeah. So you know, yeah. the truth is, I've met so many people throughout the years that are not, um, how do I say this? They're not, their talent does not set them apart from, from the pack, but they are sponsored. I've met people that are sponsored by, right now I know a guy who's sponsored by Fitbit. He's sponsored by, what's mm -hmm. the GoPro? He's sponsored by GoPro. a bunch of these people. And, and he's not like, was specifically amazing person. He does not have a big following on Instagram. He's got. He's, I mean, he's got okay. I mean, I think it's like like seventeen hundred or something like that. But what he's done is he writes reviews and makes videos and just 
he is constantly putting things out. And I met him in Seattle at the airport, and he was on his way flying to Taiwan or something uh-huh. on a full paid trip for them to show him all these new fucking things from some company. And and they're just they're paying this man to to write reviews on their stuff and to talk about it. And he's got yeah. a YouTube page, but that like is I mean it's it's not big, but I mean it's, it's big enough. It reaches not, people. It's, it's it's what it is is it's good content that they reuse, like you're saying. Right. Like they take his video of like, hey, the Fitbit's awesome. We get to exercise this, or whatever, and then they put it on their website. Yeah, they can That's use it, they and they don't have to produce it themselves. They don't have to do any exactly. of that. So and it's like, and, and then he's got so much stuff coming out that it's just, it's like smash this guy up because he's mm-hmm. he's the fucking he's a PR machine. He's he's a he's. He's, what's it called? Do you say sub not substance, but uh, yeah, substance. You know, no, it's like uh, there's enough just stuff. Uh, <laughs> I get you, but um, what's the word? Just for stuff. It's like uh, it's like you content. Thank you. Yeah, content. content. I, 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 yeah, there's yeah. constant content. Well, I thought I didn't think you were gonna say that because you said that like. Two sentences ago, so I thought you were thinking of a different word. I said content? Yeah, you did. Um, uh, or I might have. I don't know. But uh, uh, Nobody's ever said content in their life. <laughs> not on a podcast, which is content. But yeah, like something like that. It's He might not have as many followers, but everyone that follows him is coming there because they want his opinion on what to fucking buy. So those followers are so much more valuable than uh, some girl that just has a nice butt with two million. Because, you know, like, as far right. as conversions, you know what I mean? Like, so he's prov- he's you know providing real vo- value. Dude, you know what you just reminded me of? <laughs> Which, I did a video with um, this girl who's got, like... Like three million followers. Million whatever followers. Did I talk about it last time? We, we, we talked about it at Subway. Oh, Okay, well, I think that's fucked up because the there was somebody wearing glasses that had recorders in them, and we were out in the hall waiting for our cue to go in, uh-huh. and I was talking shit about about how like she's got followers because of her butt. Like she, the whole time we were filming and stuff, she was like, "Well, can you see enough of my boobs?" And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like she knows what's up. She knows she knows what she was doing.